Hello everybody and welcome to our postgraduate online event here at the Dumfries campus, a school of social and environmental sustainability and today we are talking about our tourism subject area here on campus and all the programs and research that we can offer uh, across that subject. So my name is Amy, I'm delighted to be here today to tell you a little bit more about this subject area. We have a whole host of these events throughout the day today. All of our subject areas will be covered. Uh, so please do join in if you want more information about anything that you can come to learn about here at the School of Social and Environmental Sustainability in Dumfries. So right now I'm going to talk you through a little bit more about our school and campus as a whole. So we are, of course, the School of Social and Environmental Sustainability here at the University of Glasgow's Dumfries campus based in southwest Scotland, approximately 75 miles from the city of Glasgow itself. We are based here in 85 acres of parkland campus here in Dumfries and we typically welcome staff and students from across the UK and around the world from more than 40 countries every single year. So we're a really international campus here um, and we have so much fun. We have a living laboratory that surrounds our campus as we like to call it, that is the region of Dumfries and Galloway and of course the wider Scotland itself um, and we make fair use of that so we make sure to get out and about as much as we possibly can make use of this living laboratory that surrounds our campus and that includes our teaching garden which is actually right on our back doorstep there's a picture of it on your screen now and um, we use that for for teaching as social space and um, for events and all sorts of things as well and that is right on our doorstep we have small class sizes here at Dumfries campus we really pride ourselves on that because you get much more opportunity to get to know your lecturers to get to know your classmates and your peers as well uh, and have much deeper conversations with them within your classes we're a real close-knit community here we're a very friendly bunch and of course being a Russell Group institution our academics are among the top researchers in their fields so you're learning from some truly fantastic people our subject areas are their cells. Uh, we have four main subject areas that we cover here at the School of Social and Environmental Sustainability, and that is environmental science, sustainable development, education and tourism, which is what we're going to cover right now. And then finally, of course, when you join the School of Social and Environmental Sustainability, you gain access to a collective of world leading research networks who are at the forefront of their respective fields. So we have the Education Interdisciplinary Research Group, the Environmental Science and Sustainability Group, the Glasgow End of Life Studies Group, and of course, the University of Glasgow Tourism Studies Group. And it's worth a mention here as well, with all these research networks uh, comes a brilliant opportunity for postgraduate research um, and further study. If you want to do your PhD, for example, and um, we have lots of opportunities for you there. And if you want any more information about that, you can just reach out to us. So, we're going to dive a little bit deeper now into our tourism subject area. If you have any questions for us throughout this session, please, you can uh, go to slido.com and use the code hashtag U of G and ask any questions you may have. Or you can use the comment section uh, of the video where you're viewing this on YouTube as well. And um, please just get in touch. But for now, I'm going to bring my colleague on to join me. Um, I'll let him introduce himself properly. Um, and then we can talk a little bit more about tourism here at Dumfries. Hi everyone and thank you so much Amy for, for the introduction. Um, so my name is Guillaume and I'm a, a, a lecturer in tourism with a focus on management and marketing but I'm also a, a program leader for the management and sustainable tourism degree that we share with the Adam Smith Business School up the road and I'm also a director of postgraduate programs for the whole school of social and environmental sustainability. What I would like to start with is, as most of our uh, postgraduate programs are, uh, you know, located in Dumfries, at least for part of, of them, uh, we've got a wonderful region here, as, as, uh, as Amy mentioned, with absolutely stunning coast and hills, absolutely great for outdoor sports, probably uh, we would argue the best uh, mountain biking, uh, you know, area for uh in you know doing uh, mountain biking in the uk we also uh, right at the border with england and that leaves a lot of legacy in terms of cultural heritage uh, but also we are the home of robert burns and peter pan uh we have an amazing uh scene for for culture and arts in Dumfries and throughout the whole region with amazing festivals but also we are an ideal place uh, for traveling across the UK and obviously for, for Scotland and, 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 and to Europe. 
So the reason why uh, I'm mentioning about this and, and actually you can see a map of Dumfries and Gataway is because our tourism programs embed a lot of different field trips and we apply a lot of the knowledge that we teach uh, our students to, about, you know, uh, sustainable tourism, for example, but we also take the, the students into the region to apply this knowledge across different locations, different festivals, different organizations from UNESCO Biosphere Reserves to events, um, folk music festivals, for example, to also uh, venues in sustainable tourism that are located across really this beautiful region of, of Dumfries and Galloway. If, uh, uh, to, to really give you a complete picture of, of, uh, of this region, we, Dumfries is also the home of the, the, the Robert Burns, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the national Scotland uh, poet. Uh, and uh, Robert Burns ended his life in Dumfries. And what you can see on this picture is actually his house a statue uh, of, of Robert Burns and, and, and some uh, places and locations where he was, uh, you know, hanging around in Dumfries. Uh, this is a very important legacy for the town in terms of heritage. And some of our uh, courses and some of the programs also address this legacy in terms of sustainable heritage management. So if you think about tourism and why a tourism is actually located most of our pro postgraduate programs are located in Dumfries is because we have a fantastic playground, if you wish, to apply the knowledge in terms of sustainable tourism, but also in terms of heritage and sustainable heritage management. So what we really do is at, at, at Glasgow University in tourism, as Amy mentioned, we've got a, a breadth of topics and, and an amazing uh, team to address those, those, uh, those topics. We, re we are really at the forefront of the research and debate about really the challenges that are posed by uh, the analysis of tourism as a, as a so socioeconomic phenomenon. Uh, we, we try to tackle those challenges through practice uh, and through uh, interdisciplinary approach to tourism. I'll come back to that a little bit later, but uh, this interdisciplinarity is found throughout the different courses that we teach at Glasgow University and specifically at the Dumfries campus. We are very committed to, to the global efforts towards sustainable and including, inclusive economic development. So post-pandemic, really, the tourism sector is, is thriving again and, and is very pivotal for the renewed prosperity of communities' well-being. So we look at a lot of the different impacts of tourism, from the care economic impacts to social cultural impacts to environmental impacts, but also while, while also acknowledging the complexity of all these different impacts and how they inter interact with one another. So really looking at proposing creative solutions, innovative solutions and impactful solutions to tackle those impacts and to tackle those challenges. The group also encompasses a comprehensive range of expertise in tourism and spanning from tourism and regional development, sustainable cultural tourism, the geography of tourism, tourism economics, uh, cultural economics and tourism and entrepreneurship. And a lot of our colleagues here are also uh, focused on heritage conservation, architecture and planning. So we've got a team that embraces really those, uh, those uh, complexities and those interrelationships between sustainability, heritage, impact and how they can be uh, developed and applied, if you wish, into, um, into the whole um, fieldwork of tourism. We've got four major th research themes and approaches that we, we, um, we, we, you know, we, we, we have expertise on. We have really um, the first one that is really an important one and it's really embedded at, at the core of every postgraduate program that we have here. Um, is tourism as an engine for sustainable development. And so the notion of sustainable development being that destinations have to be not only fi financially sustainable and long-term financially sustainable, but also, of course, environmentally sustainable. And, and this concept of sustainability is, is really uh, developed throughout all the different programs and courses. We also have a very strong focus on sustainable cultural tourism and heritage. 
uh, we, we, we do have a number of research projects uh, at all levels, really. And what I mean is at the postgrad taught and at the, the postgraduate research level uh, that are really focusing on, on, on the, the management of heritage across a wide variety of destinations from Southeast Asia to Scotland to a, a European destinations. We then have uh, a group of experts in our team focusing on the geography and history of tourism. So we, we've got historians in our team, we've got cultural heritage spe specialists, but we also have faculty members who have been traveling around the world um, and have done, for example, their PhDs in, in other locations in Scotland and can really, really tap into the, the challenges not only from a Scottish perspective, but from an international, transnational perspective. And finally, we've got um, some expertise in the group on uh, smart cities, decision support systems, and the future of tourism. And uh, by future of tourism, we mean really how can we tackle those challenges of sustainable tourism moving forward, but through uh, information and, and communication technologies, through the development and application of AI to tourism, for example, and how we can embed those practices across urban contexts with smart cities and the concept of smart cities, interconnected cities with, uh, with information communication technologies, as well as how we can tackle uh, this challenge, these, those challenges around, uh, among urban, uh, sorry, uh, rural areas. So really having this dichotomy of smart, of smart, of urban and and rural tourism destinations. So the programs that we offer, uh, mainly at the Dumfries campus, and I'll come back to this a bit later, is actually threefold. We've got sustainable tourism and global challenges. That is a program that is entirely offered at the Dumfries campus. We've got uh, a, a dual campus degree, uh, which is management and sustainable tourism. It's a, a program that is offered across Glasgow and Dumfries campuses. And we've got a, a Tourism Development and Culture MSc that is actually a two years master's program that uh, offered across a number of different countries. And I'll come back to that in a minute. So a, the MSc Sustainable Tourism and Global Challenges is was offered a last year for the first time and is really looking at, as it states, at global challenges. So we really try to embed and uh, traditional models of tourism that are primarily industry focused. And the aim of this program is really to explore the sector, how the sector, sorry, can respond to global challenges and to equip students with, with the practical skis to develop sustainable solutions in the future. So there's a wide range of courses uh, from circular tourism to wildlife tourism to a uh, sustainable heritage management. So really looking at how the tourism industry is facing challenges and how these, those challenges can be tackled through across different disciplines uh, from management to a um, um, economy, history, etc. The manage, MSc Management and Sustainable Tourism is, a, is really a program that is primarily focusing on the management side of tourism with a focus on sustainable tourism. So you will, it's a dual campus program with a first semester in Glasgow. So the, the first semester is, is about primarily core management courses from human resource management to finance to project management to a, a service residence and risk um, uh, delivery. Um, so really primarily core management courses that are then applied in semester two in them freeze with tourism courses, such as tourism sustainability and climate change, events management, tourism marketing. Uh, so really having, a, 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 if you wish, uh, an, an incremental uh, development from the management to the application of management to sustainable tourism. We then have a, 
So the, these are a uh, couple of videos. If you are interested in the, the, the you know, to, to know more, these videos are on display on our websites. The, the last Erasmus Mendes joined master's, deg master's degree is actually um, a two-year program exploring contemporary theoretical and practical issues in tourism development. Again, here with a, a very cultural focused uh, approach that really provides critical analytical, analytical skills, giving the opportunity for students to, to really tackle key challenges in, in the management of cultural heritage. Um, this is a program that is taught across different campuses, from Glasgow University to University of Malta, then going for uh, a semester three at, a university, at the University of, of the Choice from Lund University to University Institute of Lisbon, and finally a semester four in uh, for a dissertation primarily with the University of Malta. What is being uh, uh, also done throughout this program is I talk a lot about semester one and two, but a lot of the, the students are also interested to know what you're doing in semester three. Semester three for our postgraduate programs in tourism is usually dedicated to what we call a summer project. Uh, so for management and sustainable tourism, we have either a dissertation, which is an individual piece of research on any relevant topic in management of sustainable tourism in a country, or well, you know, uh, management of sustainable tourism for, for, for heritage, really, as, as a growing phenomenon. Or we have a, a project that really looks at providing recommendation in response to a business challenge. So we find organizations, we develop case study scenarios with them, and we have groups of students uh, tackling those challenges uh, for organizations. For the two other MSCs, the Sustainable Tourism and Global Challenges and, and Tourism Development and Culture, they have either a dissertation, again, an individual piece of research uh, on any relevant topic, a management of sustainable tourism or heritage, but, or a work placement uh, in a museum, a nature reserve, a festival organization, a tourism attraction, or agency. So a little bit of a different scheme for these two, for these three masters. A lot of uh, the time, students are also asking uh, what they're doing, what are the topics, possible topics that they can uh, tackle through a, um, a dissertation or essays, because lots of these courses have uh, has essays in terms of uh, coursework and assignments. So this is a couple of examples, really. So you see how we are approaching tourism here. For example, applications of, of AI in destination management, uh, opportunities and constraints for small destinations. We've got some uh, essay topics about destination branding uh, in responding to Chinese tourist motivation to visit. We have other topics that can include environmental impacts and sustainability of music festivals. And so here you can see some very top music festivals across Europe being analyzed there. We've got topics in biosecurity and ecology, uh, about how is it managed in, in the tourism and transport sector. This is uh, for, for this one, uh, like the case of Scotland and three case studies in Scotland. We've got topics tackling, for example, the values of Scottish heritage tourism and the, and the impacts on, on, on fundraising management. So really something completely different, focusing on the valuation, on, on the valuation, the economic valuation of heritage. We've got topics tackling media inducing uh, tourism motivation. So you see here again, a case study uh, about Japan. So we, we had that here, uh, a student from Japan and many, many more topics. This is just really a selection of topics that, that we're tackling through dissertation and essay topics within each uh, postgraduate course that we teach uh, at Glasgow University. And finally, career prospects. The career prospects are, are very, very wide again, um, but of course, they tackle on, 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 on you know, they, they, they focus and, and tackle on a, a couple of tourism challenges uh, so you can teach on a tourism sustainability heritage program at all levels, of course, including university. 
But a lot of uh, our students are also uh, ending up working for the government, for local authority agency back in their own countries, for local councils. Some of them found jobs with Visit Scotland. Some of them uh, were involved with Historic Scotland. And some of our students go back home because we've got a very wide cohort of international students, primarily international students, working back home and they create their own tourism organization, their own tourism venture. They work in different hotels, uh, tour operators, traveling agencies. But some of them are also doing business consultancy work uh, because they have then their, this expertise to actually benchmark the, the, the tourism strategies that are offered in their own countries. And then because some of our degrees are very focused on heritage and cultural heritage, a lot of our students and graduates end up working for art galleries, museums, heritage organizations across really the whole world. Thank you so much. And, and if you have any questions, please, please ask. Thank you so much, Guillaume. Thank you. Um, I mean, just fantastic information there. It's, it's so exciting, all the things that we can offer here. So thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions, please do send them in. Uh, we have had some here, so we're going to just dive straight in, I think, with some questions and get some answers to you. So our first question here, are there any additional costs that are expected of students, for example, resources or field trips? Well, um... Not, no, not for field trips. So um, we, we usually organize the whole, um, you know, the whole logistics of the field trips. So you, we organize the buses that, to go to field trips. The only extra cost I would say is now from experience that we've got for the management and sustainable tourism degree. Uh, some students decide to spend the whole year in Glasgow, whereas we really strongly advise them to spend you know, one first first semester in Glasgow, second semester in Dumfries. So we can't really fund their commutes, if you wish, uh, because our Dumfries campus is about roughly two hours from the main campus in Glasgow. So very often students don't know about this. And it's very important that you take this into account, that if you are deciding to spend a whole year in Glasgow, you will have to come at least three days a week for semester two in our Dumfries campus. So some students decide to make this this choice but they are actually paying for their commute travels whether by train whether by bus or or by their private means but that's really the only extra cost that you have to take into account beyond the the, the fees of your of the program yeah absolutely no that's great thank you so much um okay next question oh brilliant question do we share classes with others on the other tourism programs or from any other program. So, how much of our how much of our students are getting to actually mix with others? Yeah, so it's it's a very good question, and it, it actually it's actually why our tourism programs are unique because, as as Amy said, we have very small class sizes, um, so that allows really some much more interaction with, with students. And so, we're talking about around 20, 20 students, really 25 students sometimes per, per class. Um, so we have these, these uh, free masters in tourism, but if I take primarily uh, sustainable tourism and global challenges and MSc in management and sustainable tourism, in semester two, those two cohorts mix in, in the courses that we offer. If you take the management and sustainable tourism degree, you will be mixed up in Glasgow with what we call pathway students. So, they, you know, it could be students taking a finance degree, a, 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 an operations management degree, or, you know, um, a project management degree. So it's just a little bit different. The structure is, is a little bit different. But to, to answer your question here, um, yes, students are, you know, mixed. And sometimes we even have students who actually take other degrees such as uh, the MNC, MSc environmental sciences or even the environmental communication uh, from from my colleagues so occasionally we've got students from other courses also joining in and uh, just because we we have this interdisciplinary approach interdisciplinary approach to to you know really tackling those challenges in, in postgrad uh, courses in, in, in tourism 
No, fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, Okie doke. Are international students able to work part time while studying? So I'll, I'll let you jump in on this one. And just to say initially that the biggest advice we always give is just to check out your, your visa, some visa, you know, requirements or restrictions mean you can work up to 20 hours during the week. Some some don't allow that. So please just be very, very careful um, of exactly what your visa does and doesn't allow um, and just keep that in mind. But, you know, in, in, in theory, Guillaume, you know, if, if students are studying, is, is it feasible to work part time? Right. So as, as you said, Amy, um, usually students are allowed, if you wish, on a tier four visa, if you're an international student to work around 20 hours per week. I, I would say maximum 20 hours per week. It is always an interesting one because I, I tend to, you know, really advise students to be careful about doing this. Technically, it's possible. But, for example, in, in the summertime, um, your dissertation or your work placement or the project is, is, is traditionally quite demanding. Uh, so on paper, yes, technically it's possible. Now, how you can integrate that to your studies and balancing this out to your studies, it's another story, I would say. It really depends on your availability. It really depends on how you're coping with your coursework. Um, and as I said, all these postgrad uh, programs, you know, at least two of them are a one year program and, um, and it's, it, it can become quite intense. Uh, if I take the management and sustainable tourism program, you have six courses in semester one. You've got, you know, of 10 credits and three of 20 credits in semester two. And that makes student really busy uh, with yes. coursework. So. It's a double-edged sword, if you wish. Uh, it's a really a case-by-case -case, um, situation, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. And it brings up another great point as well, actually, which is we have a dedicated student support officer and student services team here. Um, I mean, across all of our campuses, but just to highlight, we have here in Dumfries our student support officer. So if that was something students, you know, were ever worried about, you know, you've got your advisor of studies, as well as student support, as well as our administrative team, you know, it's all these people that you can come to, to ask for advice or to ask for a bit of, of help and support. So just to mention that as well, that is available for you if, if you needed it. Um, but no, thank you very much. Okay, next question. How much time will we have to explore, just oh, speaking of time, <laughs> how much time will we have to explore Dumfries and Galloway or Scotland as a whole? Will the will students get ch uh, chances to, to explore? I would say this is the main appeal of these degrees. I mean, every year, um, so depending on, on the, the MSc you will be uh, choosing, uh, if you spend a whole year in Dumfries, this is enough to spend actually a lot of your free time exploring the region beyond the field trips. And as I said in the beginning of my presentation, when you saw that map of Dumfries and Galloway, uh, I can't speak, you know, I mean, I, I am French originally and I'm still discovering aspects of this region in terms of tourism, events, festivals, uh, heritage locations from the National Trust of Scotland, Historic Scotland, Visit Scotland sites that are absolutely breathtaking. Um, we live in a probably the most beautiful rural destination of Scotland, labeled as such by Visit Scotland. Uh, so you will have a lot of free time uh, because, you know, you have Traditionally, uh, three courses per semester, except for the MST program, because those credits are, those courses, sorry, are 10 credits. So, but you, in, in, if you take the Management Sustainable Tourism degree, you'll be spending a whole semester in Glasgow. So you will have definitely time also to explore urban uh, areas like Glasgow and Edinburgh. Obviously, you'll be based in Glasgow, but also you have the opportunity to explore the rural side of Scotland. If you, if you spend the whole year in Dumfries with the Sustainable Tourism and Global Challenges, you actually will have time to explore much more, much beyond the Dumfries and Galloway. So yes, uh, you, you'll have that time. And of course, semester free, there will be free time for you to, to discover uh, Scotland. Scotland is at the moment one of, one of the most exciting tourism destinations for a, you know, uh, nature tourism. 
So whether you're have, doing this with a camper van, with, with a bike, tramping, exploring the different Monroes, uh, going for, for a highland trip, going on the islands of Sky, uh, Harris, Levis, and beyond, this is one of the most, you know, breathtaking scenery uh, that you can find in Europe. So definitely that, you know, working in tourism, studying tourism, that's a must do. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it's um, here in Dumfries, we're very, very lucky because we're so well connected to not just Scotland, but the rest of the UK as well. So trains, for example, we can go to Locker Bay, to Edinburgh, to Glasgow, down south to Carlisle in England, to, to Newcastle, to Manchester, London, you know, all from Dumfries, you know, so we've got this this great network around us. Um, if you do want to go further afield and take the train and, you know, go for a little full explore somewhere, then you absolutely can do that. Um, and as you say, I think it's highly encouraged, you know, if, you, if you're here in this beautiful this beautiful country, then you should come in and have a look, a look around and, and see what you can find and explore a little bit. So, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. OK, next question. Is it possible to go straight from my first degree into postgraduate study? A, what, what did you mean exactly by first degree? Um, do you mean so an I undergrad? Assume, I, I'm assuming they're meaning their undergraduate degree, yes. Well, you, go, you have to go through the selection process, of course. A, so all these programs have different requirements in terms of a, you know uh, getting into the programs from a 6.5 IELTS a, to other requirements that are all specific to to you know to every program so I would encourage you to to have a look I don't see why you couldn't a, but we do require we do uh, have a selection process because we 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 want to make sure that you can succeed uh, throughout these programs yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and what we'll do later on, actually, we're going to hear in this session, we'll hear from um, one of our students who actually went from undergraduate straight into postgraduate study. Um, and she'll talk a little bit about her experiences um, and, and how she found the whole kind of system of going from from the undergraduate four years into the into the one year master. So we'll, we'll hear from her uh, just in a little bit. But thank you so much for the question. OK, next one. Oh, I love this. So enthusiastic. Okay, can we see the reading list before we start class? Do they get shared during Welcome Week? Yeah, so so technically all these reading lists are made available to students a before they commence their semester. So a traditionally before semester one, all the courses will be ready for you. Uh, and and every course has an online. A, a reading list that is made available to students. Um, those reading lists and that a whole list of key resources from journal articles to book chapters and beyond. So absolutely. Um, and they are really key to the success of, uh, you know, those courses as well. So ev traditionally, every, every week you will have readings uh, that are, of course, connected to the topic of the week. So, yes, my, the answer is yes. And they get shared usually ahead of your you starting the courses and, and the week, specific topic on every week. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. OK, a couple more questions. Um, let's see. Oh, are there any scholarships available? Great question. So um, if you don't mind, game, I'll jump in on this one. Sorry, but, absolutely. Um, yeah. We have... <laughs> we have a fantastic tool on the University of Glasgow's website. Um, so if you head to gla.ac.uk forward slash scholarships, you can actually use our scholarship tool so you can put in the level you're, you're studying at, where you are in the world, what program you're coming to, and it will basically generate a list of potential scholarships that might be applicable, that you might be able to apply to specifically for either like I say, your program or or where you live or, or your nationality, anything like that, you know, anything that might possibly um, come up for you, this tool can help you to find um, exactly um, what you could apply for. And um, of course, you can reach out as well, you know, if you have any questions, the scholarships team are fantastic. Um, for any of the things that you might find on our website, please do just reach out. But I would highly recommend if you're interested in looking for scholarships, 
use uh, go to this website that's on your screen now gla.ac.uk forward slash scholarships um, and use our tool and see what you can find out cool okie doke final question i think can you tell us more about the support the management and sustainable tourism students get during the final project great question thank you yeah so this is an option that we introduced about two years ago a where it's an option that I'm involved in uh, with people from Adam Smith's Business School. A, so traditionally, we have an organization, we, for example, it could be the UNESCO Biosphere Reserve we have down here in, in the Frisian Galloway. It has a couple of challenges and objectives uh, to tackle uh, in their management. What we do is we draft a case study scenario, and then we have and that's the, 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 the difference to, to a dissertation. We have a group of students that is actually, uh, you know, chosen or they actually apply for, for that particular project. Uh, traditionally, five or six students. For that, there's one supervisor that is managed, that is managing the team. So usually it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a supervisor that is chosen by the Adam Smith Business School. Uh, I know them very well. Uh, they're all absolutely amazing uh, in, in managing those teams of students. Uh, but let's say a project will have five challenges. You will have five students, but you will be marked still individually working as a team. And then you have a Viva, you have a presentation to do as a team. And then throughout this team presentation, every student is also marked individually. So the support systems are there. Uh, traditionally, like the dissertation, it's about five meetings across the summer, plus, of course, uh, more individual meetings and more emails uh, happening throughout the whole summer. Uh, this is traditionally a very popular uh, option for this degree now. I mean, last year we had almost 100% of students taking that option, uh, primarily because lots of students don't find necessarily the need to do a dissertation they, they they're more uh, you know at ease with something that is more applied also that is more group orientated rather than being alone if you wish uh, doing their dissertation from home that's super thank you so much thank you everyone for all of your questions uh, we hope you've enjoyed this session of our tourism subject area. We're going to now hear from one of our students um, about her journey from undergraduate to postgraduate study. Uh, and then we'll hear a little bit more about student life in Dumfries as a whole and what some of our students get up to in their free time. So for now, we'll say thank you so much. Thank you, Guillaume. Thank you for joining us. And we'll say goodbye for now. Thank you, everyone. My name is Erin and I am a student at the University of Glasgow. I did my undergraduate degree here and I actually stayed on to do my postgraduate degree. I started out studying primary education here at the Dumfries campus and so I'd really developed a love for the academic side of just this university because I was currently doing my dissertation and so the idea of potentially doing a postgraduate programme just kind of came to me. I went to my advisor and she really did, she gave me that helping hand to kind of take me through the process. And I think that was actually, that's a really lovely part about coming from undergraduate to postgraduate is you already have that support network there. It was just a really smooth process actually. And I definitely felt supported the whole way through, which I think is really important. I think the main reason why I chose to stay here is because I'd already fallen in love with the campus, but it was, it's mainly the people. I'll be honest, it was, I felt so supported here all throughout my undergraduate um, programme that st I knew that doing a postgraduate programme here would be a great step for me. Having that support network and also just that happy, positive energy, I knew that that would continue through to postgraduate because I'm working with similar people. I would definitely recommend a postgrad. If you're a little bit unsure, I would definitely recommend even having a look at it. Speak to your lecturers, speak to people and just say, I'm thinking about a postgraduate programme, 
What are your thoughts? Your lecturers, other postgraduate students that might be on the campus, they are the best people to talk to about everything there because they were once in your shoes. The postgraduate courses are a great way to look at your options and they can open so many other doors, which is what I needed at the time because I didn't know what door I wanted to go through. So it wasn't just me pursuing one path, it was so many paths are now open to me because I made that decision. Hi there, I'm Emily. My name is Taya. I'm Aidan. My name's Edwina. I'm a fourth year student at the University of Glasgow Dumfries campus and I'm originally from Glasgow. And I'm originally from South Africa. And I'm originally from Kelso. And I'm from Malaysia. A lot of the other universities I had visited for my interview, they were all based in cities and it felt like something was missing and it was only when I came here it was just so beautiful and it was so much nicer and so much easier to breathe than where I was originally from. It just immediately made me fall in love with the place. <laughs> it's like being in the countryside, but it's slightly bigger, but it's still got the nice sort of close-knitness that I was looking for. When I go on holiday, it's to places like this. It's like I go camping and I go <laughs> to Lake District for walks. It's actually one of the main reasons I chose here. <laughs> I was actually really excited because you can't really walk around in South Africa. So being here, being able to walk for like 40 minutes and find something completely different, that was really, I, I enjoyed it more once I found out how like walkable it was. Coming here, it was just a lot of space. So if you ever did feel trapped, you kind of had like lots of places to escape to. But then you've also got the town center, which does have a lot of things for you to do as well. <laughs> One of the first things we discovered in first year was the boathouse because if you walk from Halls down to the river and then all the way up, you'll get to Glen Capel. So it is a bit of a, a walk from Halls, but it was worth it discovering the boathouse. There's a lot of nice wee tiny pubs that you maybe would have walked past if you were in a city, but here you can like try them all out. Dreams do a teapot cocktail, which was quite interesting. Fun fact, it used to be like a bowling place, but now they've changed it to pool, which is also great. Curacao Tap is really nice. They do a lot of like international beers. Any nice place I saw is chill and just sort of sip. King's coffees are really good. When we found it, it had really friendly staff and it's still kind of the same staff and they're very international. It's a nice little cafe, good for studying. Lots of different choices for your teas and your hot chocolates. The food's really good. It's very cheap as well and it's very student friendly. Quite a few students work there as well. There's lots of choices for gyms here. So I go to more of a sort of a casual one. But then you've got ones that are more into boxing, you've got your 24 7 ones that are open every hour. Elevate Gym converted the old granary or grain storage place. I like the aesthetic in there. The thing about Dumfries is it's got this whole rustic vibe to it, but when I walked into the gym, it genuinely felt like I could have been in the city because that's how modern the gym looked. You don't have to go to the gym. <laughs> Actually, there's a really cool festival that they do here every year. They get like lots of famous people to come perform and it's actually really cool. The town centre constantly needs part-time workers, so you could easily find a job. But it's also a really great way to be part of the community because you meet other people, make new friends. All the pubs are always looking for people and it's a really friendly environment in the pubs. It's really fun working here, it's been ideal. It's meeting people, so when you go out, you bump into the same lot of people and you build friendships with people out with uni. So some of my closest friends now aren't even part of the university. It's a very friendly place. Over like the past three years, I have made quite a lot of really good friends. I've kind of built my own family here at this point and coming to Dumfries, I've been able to explore myself more and express myself better. It's been a good place for me to, to grow and feel safe about being who I am. Music